Hi guys, welcome to Monocure 3D's Pro Tips. Today we're going to check out this Anycubic washer. We're going to put it through its paces. We're going to get a couple of prints off the Elegoo Mars and we're going to wash it and then we're going to cure it and see how it performs. Okay guys, it's time to have a look and seeing how this printed. Take the lid off and there they are. The two rooks printed there, they're hanging on the build plate nicely. With resin printing, it's the one thing uh, that we need to remember is just to try and contain whatever mess there is. And I think these fall trays are a really good way to do that. This was printed overnight, but if this was just finished printing, there'd be quite a lot of resin still dripping. By using this, the resin's gonna drip off it on, on a steeper angle and drip into the vat. The next thing we need to do is get these off. Now, I always use a paint scraper like this. I just work around the base of it and just try and find a spot. There you go, that one came off pretty easily, where it, it's sort of, there will be a spot where it's not as, as, as stuck as anywhere else. Sometimes they can be stuck harder than other times. And if that's the case, yeah, down here, probably a little bit harder work. It's usually pretty easy. Just quickly about this build plate being black. As I mentioned before, black is not ideal for UV curing because the light is absorbed by the black. If you want to reduce the amount of layers and the duration of the layer times, sanding this back to the bare aluminium would really help it. Four by 100 seconds I used to get adhesion to that. If you didn't have the black, you could probably go down to four by 45. So it's not really saving much time, but it's more peace of mind. We also, of course, have Plate Bond, which is a great product and really would help in this situation. I've just got this beaker. You can just use a plastic cup or whatever and one of these paper filters. They just have a little bit of mesh in the bottom there. Perfect for filtering the bits out of the resin. So the reason we filter it is we really need to make sure that there's no bits floating around. You've got to remember that this build plate when it comes back down and it comes into the contact with the bottom of the FEP, it, if it's not 100% touching because there's something in the way, then you do risk that first layer not curing. And that's why we, we really encourage you to clear the resin out. Sometimes you never know, there could be some resin that has cured under there that's leaked out or even just the surface tension between the FEP sheet and the screen. Pulling it straight out can cause damage to the LCD. So I always try and break the seal first by lifting it up and then sliding it out, removing it. There's a little spot here which is area that makes it easier to pour and just pouring it into the paper filter. Luckily we did filter this. You can see straight away that there is a few areas there where things have cured on the FEP and they're very fine. I didn't see them before and I'm seeing them now as, as I've poured it out. That would have caused a problem on my next print and those bits can just go in the filter. That's what the filter's for. Plastic scraper or a glove fingernail are my two rules with FEPs. Don't ever put anything metal in there because you do, as I say, do risk damaging it. So that one's a bit hard to get off of the scraper so I might just try my fingernail on there. A bit more scraping and yeah there you go it's off so you can see there now that clear of particles and clear mainly clear of the resin so now you have two choices the resin from this beaker can go back into the vat and into the printer or it can go back into the bottles it's always safest to put it back in these bottles they're uv safe the lights are not going to get to them leaving them in the beaker if there's any sunlight or UV light that could set this off, could cause problems, just be aware of that. Just quickly back on this, you can see here where it poured, there's a bit of mess. Just give that a, a clean because again, that's the sort of thing that will end up on the LCD screen. If, if resin does go on the LCD screen, don't panic. A little bit of resin away or IPA and a very soft piece of paper towel will remove that. A lot of these will have a protective glass over the top of the LCD. You don't want to scratch the glass, but you know you're not damaging the LCD screen itself. So that's ready to go back in. Another good thing to remember is don't put it in with the resin. That can cause the resin to tip out and spill again onto the LCD or into the back of the printer here. And never leave the build plate on without the vat in place. And if this ever has resin on it, uh, it can drip. I can happily put this back into place. That's all good to go. If I was changing colors, I would of course clean that up properly. I would use resin away and then water and give it a good wash and then a paper towel, the whole thing properly. The next thing we're gonna do is we need to put these into the washer curer. First thing we need to do is lift the lid off. We can lift out the basket and we can put the rooks in there and we lower the basket. We 
pop it into place. We put the lid back on. Remember, this will not work without the lid. We check that it's on wash, not cure. We check the timer. We'll put it on four minutes. We can hit start. And these rooks are pretty light, so they will start probably spinning around a bit. But it's very gentle. I don't think it's going to be damaging. And that's really doing a good job of cleaning the resin off. The great thing about this is it goes one way for half the time, and then it stops and goes the other way. And I think that's a really nice feature. Okay, so there you go, it's now finishing its wash. I think four minutes is a relatively good time for something like this. Obviously, it would really depend on what you were washing. If it was a much larger piece with a lot of supports and it had a lot of crevices and corners and nooks where the resin could get caught, then of course you need to make sure that you do it for longer. So let's take the lid off this now. Now open this basket up. Here's one of the blue rooks that we printed. It's been out of the wash. It's still got resin away on it. Do not at this point put it in water and that would make it go cloudy and also potentially it could end up cracking the model. Give it a pat dry. If you've got compressed air, even better. You know, some of these models can be so soft that even a pat dry can damage the outside of them. They're still 85 to 90% cube. Let's remove the wash, grab our trusty disc, which we use for the curing. Obviously the brown can come off, this is a new machine, so the paper's still on there. Just put uh, the rook in the upright position for now. There is no light coming from the bottom or from the top from this unit. But what you could do is put it on its side. So I would do one session like that and one on its side to make sure it gets a full cure. So lid goes on, we now need to go into cure. Let's leave it on four minutes, we hit start. Now straight away you'll see the lights come on down the back there and the turntable starting to turn. These lights are designed for 3D printing. They have a narrow range of around the 405 nanometer range, which is perfect for this resin. Let's call it 80 to 90% of resins use the 400, 405 nanometer range. The fact that it's spinning means that it is curing around all sides. It's just finishing off what the printer hasn't quite done, giving it a little bit more strength and a little bit more rigidity and making sure that it, it removes the tackiness from the surface. Just putting a model out in the sun is not ideal. And I know that a lot of guys use the, the little nail curing units. They do do the job, but they are a broad range. And the problem with the broad range is that you can cause uh, the parts, especially a clear uh, resin to go yellow. But if you wanted to do like a, a half hour or one hour post cure, you prefer to do that to wash it at this stage here rather than leave the resin away on it. Okay, there you go. It even beeps to let you know that it's finished. Off the lid comes. It looks exactly the same when it's post cured, but you just know that now it's ready to handle. It's not gonna get scratched easily. It's gonna be much more durable. Be very careful not to get resin away within this well or whatever solution you're using. This is a good quality Tupperware container and actually comes with a lid as well. You can sort of half do it with the deep fryer basket in there and you can do that and seal it. That's great, especially if you're using IPA because it evaporates. And I know a lot of you guys have changed over to resin away because of the evaporation problem that resin away doesn't suffer. So it's not in entirely necessary with resin away, but it's a nice feature to have. I know IPA has a strong smell, so to be able to cover it like that is an advantage. I really hope that you got a little bit out of this video. You understand a little bit more about how to use the Elegoo Mars, uh, the processes involved in getting uh, the prints from the printer and then cleaned up, washed and then cured. It's not a hard process. There's a few things that we need to follow and make sure that we follow them in the correct order. As I've shown you today, it wasn't that messy. It's certainly not something to be afraid of. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And as always, remember to keep on 3D printing.